Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. Uh, I know that there hasn't been a video in over a week and actually since Christmas there hasn't been a huge amount of videos which is not like me at all. I'm normally kind of three videos a week. I'm going to very quickly explain why that's been. Um, I know I've got a lot of little ones that watch with mummy or daddy. Um, I am going to put in the description the time in which the tutorial starts. There is a tutorial to go with this video. Um, I don't normally have to say this, but some of the things I'm about to say may not be suitable for little ones. Um, so you may want to watch this later or, um, you know, get them busy for a few minutes and then get them back for the tutorial stage or put some headphones in. Uh, I just wanted to put that kind of warning out there because uh, some of the things I'm going to talk about some people may not want their little ones to hear so uh, just be warned there's some sensitive subjects coming up. You'll notice that the craft room is an absolute mess. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook you'll know that we are doing a complete makeover of this room. Uh, we're having a summer house, um, it's actually being, it's already been delivered but it's being built tomorrow. We're going to take everything out of here, move it into the summer house, and then this room is getting a complete makeover. Uh, so that's going to be happening in the next few weeks as well. And of course, I'll do a video um, on the transition of that. So many of you will know um, or will have heard me talk about my sister-in-law, Liz, uh, who I absolutely adore. So Liz owns a local sewing shop to me and I quite often shared her fabrics that she would give me. Uh, I even did a tour of the shop um, and she was an amazing lady and she made such a difference to the local sewing community. She, she really did. Um, about eight weeks ago, she was diagnosed with her second lot of cancer. I'm not gonna go into huge amounts of details, but um, it's been a really quick, and hard journey. Um, she pretty much spent most of the last weeks in hospital and then a hospice. There was a few kind of short periods where she went home, um, but she was in so much pain, uh, so they would get her back into the hospital. And um, we spent so much time with her um, as a family, you know, her three grown up children and then her two son-in-laws and her husband, um, and then myself and Bill, we were there pretty much I mean, the children and, and her husband were there every day, but Bill and I were there an awful lot. And then she had friends that came in to see her and patrons of the shop and uh, lots of well wishes on the shop Facebook page. And it was it, we've had so much support and it's just been amazing. Um, and then last Sunday, they moved her to a local hospice. I just want to say that anyone that works in palliative care, whether you be um, in the hospital or you do house rounds, so you're Macmillan, um, or you are in a hospice, I just want to say a big, big thank you. It takes such a wonderful person um, to work in palliative care um, and even up to palliative care. I mean, there's so much that's involved in it and the hospice especially were just amazing and not just to Liz but to every single one of us I mean they were superb I mean we were practically camped out at that hospice um, and they they were just amazing the staff were just amazing so if you do work um, in that field then a big big thank you because you are making a huge difference not just to your patients but to your patients families as well and it's a really hard time for everyone um, and you really do make such a difference so thank you. On Friday uh, Liz unfortunately uh, passed away and even though we were obviously updated every step of the way and we knew it was coming um, it was still it was really hard um, the children were with her her husband was with her, her son-in-laws were with her, and Bill and I were with her, which is exactly what she wanted. And um, it was really peaceful. It was really peaceful, and uh, yes, but it, it was hard. And as I say, even though we knew it was, you know, within 24 hours, um, 
it was actually really quick it was super quick I'm not going to go into details but um yeah it was it was really quick but it was really peaceful and it was exactly the way that she wanted it to be so it was perfect but not very nice none of these things are very nice um but the last eight weeks have been actually even though they've been super hard they've they've provided some lovely moments I mean we've sang we've laughed we've talked we've painted nails we've um washed I mean we've done all sorts we've plaited hair we, I mean we've done so much um and there's been some lovely times we had a lovely Christmas day um for a short period over Christmas she she went home and uh we spent Christmas day uh with her we were there for Christmas morning and it was lovely it was a really lovely time and through the sadness we've had some really lovely times as a family um so that has been lovely and the hospital and the hospice were able to provide that to us um you know we were able to go whenever we wanted there was no time restrictions uh we always felt welcome um they tried to make us all comfortable uh it, yeah just amazing 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 people so one of the things the shop customers were asked to create were syringe driver bags and this is the tutorial part of this video so we're getting into the tutorial part. Syringe driver bags are really really important so for those of you that don't know syringe drivers um, provide uh, constant pain relief for those in uh, pretty much palliative care and they are wonderful they really are they make a huge difference to patients. Uh, but they are very functional and they are very obvious and you know they're not tiny little things they're quite you know bulky and big um, and they're not the most dignified thing and and even though people um, may have syringe drivers they may still be walking around they're not always in the hospital or the hospice at this point they are at home uh, they are still able to do things and having a syringe driver attached to you can you know be really hard to move around with and also as I say they're not the most attractive so we've been kind of asking customers to make syringe driver bags they're so easy to make you, can, you just need basic sewing skills and a sewing machine to be able to create them and they make a huge difference they really really do we are asking everyone to please make uh, some syringe driver bags if you can and please donate them to your local hospice or hospital. You don't need to send them to us. We would like this to be kind of a global thing. Um, anyone that can make them, please, please do make them and please donate. And we're asking that you take a photo of your syringe driver bags and you put them on Facebook or Instagram and you please use the hashtag sew something syringe bags uh, it would mean the world to us as a family and it would have meant the world to Liz because it was something that she was really passionate about um, we had a huge response from shop customers which is why I'm putting this out there now because um, I would really like everyone to be able to join in on this and it makes such a huge difference to syringe driver users it really really does and they're really easy to make they seriously are Unfortunately, because of the nature of syringe drivers, um, once you give one to a patient, it can't be reused. It has to stay with that patient. Uh, so you do need to be able to use washable fabric, so cottons. You know, we need you know a constant stream of them to be going into hospitals and hospices. Uh, bright, colourful, you know, really pretty that people can you know have have with them and and not look like it's it's you know something intrusive so that's what i'm asking you all to do and it would mean the absolute world to me and the, the entire family it really would uh, so if you do make some syringe driver bags please do use the hashtag so something syringe bags i would love to see them we would all love to see them and i'm going to show you now how you can make some syringe driver bags so I've got three lots of fabric here. One piece is going to be the outside of my bag. The other piece is going to be the inside of my bag. But the great thing about these syringe driver bags is they're reversible. Uh, so you can use different fabrics. So people can have uh, different sides for different days. And then you want a handle fabric as well. As I say, you do want them to be washable. 
Now we're not going to be using our Cricut machines for this. The reason being is that you need specific sizes for syringe driver bags. So you need them to be 10 inches in width by 24 inches in length and the machine will not let you cut that. Even though the mats are 12 by 24, you can get fabric mats in 12 by 24, the maximum you can cut, I think it's 23 and a half. I can never remember. I always do 23 and a half but it will not let you cut 24 so you do have to cut them manually your strap has to be 5 inches by 55 inches and of course you can do this in sections and you can then sew the strap sections together uh, but again as we're cutting the main bulk manually we might as well cut it all manually so to help me today, I'm going to be using my Cricut self-healing mat. I'm going to be using my 60mm Cricut rotary cutter. And I'm also going to be using my Cricut fabric washable pen. So I've got my self-healing mat and I've placed my fabric so it's flush against both side lines. So length and width. Now if you're good at manually cutting, you can just use your self-healing mat as a guide. I, however, am not very good, so I am going to be using a good old-fashioned ruler. And I'm just going to mark, using my Cricut fabric washable pen, all the way down at the 10 inch width mark. And I'm doing this on the inside of the fabric. I can then use a tape measure to help me measure out the length that I need. Once it's measured out, I can then come in with my Cricut rotary cutter and I can just follow my Cricut washable fabric pen line that I've made. And of course, because we're using our Cricut self-healing mat, we're not going to damage any surfaces. And that is our first piece all cut out. We can then do the exact same with this piece. So we've then got two pieces of fabric, one for the outside and one for the inside. So for your handle, you need it to be five inches wide by 55 inches in length, which is a lot of fabric. So to make it easier, I do it in two sections. So I do two lots of five inches in width by 30 inches in length. And then I sew the two together. And I can then do my second one. So the first thing I want to do is get my two strap pieces and I'm going to place them right side to right side. And then I'm just going to sew along one edge so that they become one complete piece. So when I start I always do a small stitch forward and then a back stitch as well just to make sure that that is nice and secure. And then I do the same when I get to the other side. I do a small back stitch and then I come forward again. So that is now nice and attached together. So the next thing you're going to want is an iron or your Cricut Easy Press. Of course, I'm going to use my Cricut Easy Press, but if you're not a Cricut user, you can use an iron. So whilst your Easy Press or your iron is heating up, you want to get your tape measure and you want to fold both sides of your strap about three quarters of an inch. If it makes it easier you can do a full inch, it's completely up to you. I'm using baby turkey today and I've got baby turkey set to 295 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds but if you're using an iron just have it on the cotton setting and you just want to press it until you can see that seam really starting to fold and hold. I always start in the middle first and I just come in and I just hold my easy press or my iron onto it and I'm just going to keep moving it along and just keep folding that seam. Once the first side is done we're then going to do the exact same on the other side. We're then going to fold across both ends and again we're just going to come in and press those. 
We're then going to come in and we're going to fold it over on each other and again we're just going to press this. So then I'm going to come in and I'm going to sew along both side ends and the edge as well. And I do it just so that my fabric is just against my presser foot. I then come forward again right to that edge. I'm going to make sure my needle is down. I'm going to lift my foot up. And I'm then just going to turn my fabric and then bring my foot back down. When I get to the other edge, I'm going to keep my needle down. I'm going to lift my foot up. I'm just going to turn my fabric around and then lift my foot back down and I can then sew that side edge as well. I'm going to do a few back stitches and then come forward again. So I am just going to come in and quickly give my two pieces of bag fabric a quick press with my easy press or if I was using an iron I can use an iron just to take out all those creases. We're then going to get our two pieces of fabric and we're going to place them right side to right side. And you then want to pin along one of the edges and then both sides. We're then going to bring it into the machine and I like to do a seam allowance of half an inch. Again, I'm going to do a forward stitch and then I'm going to do a back stitch. And then I'm going to sew all the way down the side, along the bottom and up the other side. Once that's then sewn, I can turn it inside out. Be sure to really get into those corners. Once we've turned our bag inside out, we can then come in and just give that a quick press again. And we're also going to turn the unsewn edge inside. Again, about half to an inch is fine. We can then fold those on top of each other and again, we're just going to press. We can then come in and sew that edge up. I like to, again for this edge, just have it sat directly under my foot. Once the top seam is all sewn up, we're then going to come in and we're just going to fold our bag in half and we're then going to pin along both sides so this edge is then going to be left open. So we're then going to come in and we're going to sew down one side and then the second side and again I do it so that my fabric is just under my foot for my seam allowance. Once the first side is done, I can then snip my thread and I can then do the second side. Once your bag's all sewn up, we can then come in and add the straps. We can then separate our seam and we're just going to place our strap over our seam and you want it to be about one and a half inches down from your bag. We can then pin it in place and you're going to sew down, across and back up. You want to make sure that your strap is not all curled up and bent so it's all nice and straight. We can then open up the seam on the other side. Again, we can place our strap one and a half inches and we can then pin it in place. So we're going to open up our bag so we don't sew our bag together. We're going to make sure our strap is all nice and straight. We're going to go so we're going to sew down, across and back up. When you get to the stitching that's already visible on the strap, you can stop. Keep your needle down but lift your foot up. Turn your fabric around and then bring your foot back down. And follow that stitch that's already there. Again, we want to make sure we've got no fabric underneath. And that's it, our bag is all nicely sewn up. 
I know that there's people out there that are going to say, oh, I could make that so much nicer. You know, I could do a bag that you don't see any of the seams on. Yes, you can do bags that way. You absolutely can. The point of this is a nice, easy project. And these are great bags to be able to no donate to your local hospice or hospital. So please do so. And I really want to see all the creations that everyone makes to donate. So please make sure that you do use the hashtag on Facebook or Instagram or even Twitter. And it's hashtag so something syringe bags. Thank you to everybody that's going to get involved with this. It means the absolute world.